put a lot into it. I'm happy for the players, you know, happy for the coaches and our fans and organization and everybody included. And these games are they're tough, they're tight, they're close, and great to see the defense come out and, and, and end it themselves. Stack in the weeks, one game at a time. Stay tuned for next week. Let's go. I tell you. Another dub at the crib, that's what we do. Let's keep it rolling. Win is a win, and talk about how hard winning in this league is, and you got to keep building on it and keep rolling from there. It's a good feeling. Tighten up! From the Bet MGM studio, welcome to the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by SeatGeek. With the head coach, I'm Mike Keith. As this football team comes off a 17-10 victory over the Carolina Panthers, a game where your team executed in situations like you had to have it. Had the, to have The it. things you've been working on. And you come back and you get that victory at home to go 4-0 at Nissan yeah, Stadium. Yeah, pretty much all the things that we've been working on, red zone, um, end of game situations, end of half. That was really cool to put on tape uh, defensively. Uh, the two-minute, uh, being able to, to get three two-minute stops in that game is, um, you know, going to win you some football games. Offensively, you know, we know it has to be better on third down. We've got to stop. Uh, beating ourselves, but there was a lot of great examples of good football in all three phases. Um, but then there's always just the one little thing that derails it. Special teams is a 20-yard return negated by a 10-yard penalty. That's that's 20 yards of field position that was lost uh, on that particular play. So it's a lot of good. You just got to start, you know, chipping away at some of these things that are you know, creeping in there that that are making them making it harder than what it should be. Is it the same at the pro level as it is at every level that you love to come back to work? and correct things after a win, it's much easier to do? Well, I mean, I think it's, you know, you probably coach them a little harder after a win. Um, you know, we're always trying to coach the action and not the result. You know, we're going to show a play here in a second where Arden um, gets a strip sack. And two plays earlier, uh, he had an opportunity to help uh, a teammate. You know, he kind of missed a pick, and, you know, we talk about working together. And, you know, we talked about it. He went back out there and made a huge play. So. Again, those are the things that we're focused on is you know, making corrections, getting past things, and, and moving on. All right, let's take a look at Mike Vrabel's six-pack presented by SeatGeek. And he's already given you the preview. Teed it up. They teed it up just beautifully. Here's Arden Key. And, and just the ability to corner. I thought he was active all game and chasing and good job timing, using his length, you know, getting that ball out. We talked about you know, just being able to create um, some turnovers and, and how – easier the game becomes when you can give the offense a short field. We scored two plays later. You know, Jeff tried to sc scoop and score, uh, but you know, just a great job there, forcing them out, coverage being tight, and then Arden finishing it off with the strip sack. There's so much momentum that goes with a play like that, too. I, I Huge. Mean, every, whether that's a kickoff, whether that's a play by the offense, I mean, we have to continue to feed off each other and, you know, in all three phases, and you know, there were some good examples of that. And obviously it leads to a score after a Utah pass to Chigakonkwo picked up five. Here's the king. Yeah, and again, we could go through here. There's a lot of things that may or may not be right on that particular play. But at the end of the day, we got guys covered up. Allowed Derek to, you know, get into his fourth or fifth step and cut it back. And, you know, you see Hop trying to cover up a linebacker. You see Nick Westbrook Akine uh, getting things covered up. So. You know, and then obviously somebody's got to make a play. Derek made a guy miss and uh, off, to the, off to the races. Derek Henry finishes with 18 carries for 76 yards and two touchdowns. Special teams contributing to the final three Titans points. Ryan Stonehouse to punt. Keep your eye on number 14, Colton Dow. Well, it was just really cool to see Colton continue to develop, and we were waiting for him to make a play. There he goes down there. He stays on his feet. We talk about coming to balance, and there's – you know, two young rookies right there, Anthony Kendall and, and Colton Dow. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, obviously, we you know, Craig Aukerman's been with us, but Anthony Levine and Tom Quinn, 
you know, have done a really nice job with some of these young guys. They put a lot of work into it. And to take a wide receiver and turn him into the special teams player of the week for, for the Titans uh, this week was pretty cool. And he's tackling a premier returner right there, very dangerous man. So you not only get a guy pinned, but you get a, a weapon and take that away from Carolina. Yeah, it was a huge factor in the game, our ability to, to back them up. I think they, we had five punts inside the 12-yard line. So, you know, when we can do that and win the field position game, you know, gives our defense great opportunities to be aggressive. Second half is all about Titans defense. Take a look at a couple of quarterback sacks. First from Jeffrey Simmons, who came out of nowhere. Yeah, you know, I think there was a good bull rush here, and then they'd be able to shed the guy. And, and I think this is another example of, you know, the coverage holding up. And you can see Jeffrey working and then being able to, to shed. But, it, you know, the quarterback is progressing. And so when the quarterback can hold on to it, uh, we've, we've got to be able to get there. You know, when he hitches and hitches, then we have to win. And so that's an example there of the coverage, you know, helping the pass rush. Simmons with five and a half sacks on the year after that one. Danico Autry, two more to get him to eight on the season. Here's one of his two sacks. Yeah, they went quick on us and they slid and they put the running back on Danico. I'm not sure what the plan was there. That's up to them. But, you know, they were trying to go quick, slid the line, you know, and ended up bringing the running back, uh, you know, back there on Danico, one of our better players and certainly one of our more savvy pass rushers. And he gets his big old paws on him and takes him down. Here's the play that ends it, fourth and six. Carolina has to go with just over two minutes remaining. Yeah, I mean, we had a third down call, and, and again, just a great job right here of Amani coming down here, making a huge tackle. Elijah is actually blitzing, gets a piece of the tackle, and uh, you know, quarterback felt like he could check that and wanted to check it. And, you know, again, you can see Amani coming down there making a great tackle for no gain, and that's a walk-off. Amani Hooker is a good tackler. I, Really good tackler. Don't you dare jinx him. Mike. I'm not jinxing him. He can play. When we come back, there will be no jinx. There will be the Fravel Street. That's next. We'll take a look at one of the big plays from Sunday's game as the coach will break it down on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Seeky. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Seat Geek. We're in the Bet MGM studio, and you know what this is? It's the Vrabel Strader. It's that time. There it is on the screen. All right. Titans had a 15-play, 91-yard drive in the first quarter. Took 9.36 off the clock for a touchdown. This play in particular set it up. Titans had moved to the 26-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go. Pretty, pretty play we're going to see here. Yeah, good design. We've done some different things here with Chig. We've tried to move him around. So here, you know, you'll see him in the backfield. You know, sometimes he'll line up in a wing. Here he's in the backfield. We've moved him around. We've done some different things. We've had some run plays with him. Um, here you get just a little bit of window dressing with the motion, uh, regular pro formation. Uh, and now Chig here with this five down front, um, he's got to do his best. We tell him A-gap till you can't. Uh, here he thinks it's closed. So now he takes the cleanest entry. You know, Hop's going to run off here. And what Chig's trying to do is we get this good hard sell play action with Derek. Now you get these linebackers biting up, and Chig slips by him. You're going to see. We need better from Jalen. He knows that. He wasn't terrible all game. But this is what happens. A guy makes a play. We're not great on the block. You're going to see here from the end zone as we get this thing going. But here's the block, okay, that we miss. Oh, well, we'll get by it. Somebody makes a play. But the play action here with Chig really sets this whole thing up. Derrick Henry's behind him. So, again, that's going to make it easier for everybody involved. Let's take a look at it from the end zone, Mike. You're going to see some great sell. Okay, you're going to see this five down front. So Chig's thinking about trying to enter through the A-gap. Okay, when it gets a little cloudy, that's when he does a nice job of adjusting. These are some things that we've tried to work on with Chig so that he can maintain his speed. Okay, but you can see here, eyes full flow lead here uh, into the Will, Will linebacker. Chig's able to slip him and keep his speed. We come out of there and... We've got a great matchup on a guy that can run and a linebacker that's up in. And again, you could see here with a little better protection, that's a touchdown. But I thought this was a great play here by Chig, just tracking the ball, staying in bounds. And then now we just got to be careful reaching the football. I think that was a touchdown. Well, I don't want it to be because I don't want to reach that football. I don't want to get it knocked that's out. A, that's a teaching point is that he's 
you don't want it extended like that for fear he may go through the end zone. It's a touchback. Yeah, and then they get the ball at the 20-yard line. So, again, we're not going to try to reach the ball unless it's fourth down or we're in a two-point conversion mode. Just for, for, the, for the sake of these guys are hustling the football, that ball goes out before the pylon, and it's a touchback. But a nice job by Will Levis. It, yeah, it was. I mean, again, I, I give him a lot of credit for his toughness. Again, we'd rather not challenge it, but being able to stay in the pocket, stare down Brian Burns, and deliver a football here to Chig. You know, I thought this was well, well uh, executed here by the players. Good timing there on the call. Good call by Tim Kelly and the offense. Titans get a touchdown out of that. A couple plays later as Derrick Henry takes it in from a yard out. When we come back, the epic Western spotlight, and I promise you, you are not going to want to miss this one on the Mike Vrabel Show. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek. The NFL's league-wide initiative, Salute to Service, gives teams a chance to honor the men and women that are this country's true heroes. During halftime of Sunday's win over Carolina, the Titans introduced everyone to veteran Seth Cole and his work with Creative Vets, a nonprofit organization that offers a different kind of therapy to those who've sacrificed the most. And now, here's his story in this week's Epic Western Spotlight. We trained up to go to Iraq. We got there, we were doing our missions, you know, trying to be part of the surge and, you know, make, make things happen, win the war, right? Well, I ended up uh, on a rooftop getting hit by one of the Mark 19 grenades that was misfired and it blew up in my face and I ended up with a bunch of shrapnel injuries, a bunch of my head, a piece of brain that fell out. Two years later, I was learning how to walk and talk and get out of the military. So by 2009, I was 25 years old and had no idea what to do with life. The military was life. Started having seizures, started having, you know, memory loss issues. And 2013 got, came around and, well, I was ready to kill myself. So it was, a, it was a pretty hard time. Having a buddy of mine call me and he said, hey, would you like to come to this thing called Creative Vets? We're going to go out to USC and do an art project. And I kind of laughed at him, but I was like, you know what? You were, you were in special forces. You, you had a lot more things that you saw than I did. So if you'll give it something, I'll give it. So Creative Vets is a nonprofit that helps empower wounded veterans to heal through arts and music. But we do that in a really cool way. We bring combat disabled veterans to Nashville to write backstage at the Grand Ole Opry with number one songwriters and artists to tell their story for the first time. In that two weeks, I, I was able to find something that I hadn't found in conventional therapy and any of the pills that I had taken. And that program ended up changing his life. And so after that happened, he started getting into asking about other programs we had. We told him about the Nashville program and he really needed to get his story out. So I said yes without even ever hearing the song. And, uh, and I'm glad I did because it's a great song. So Seth's song was a little bit different Although it talked about his war experience, talked a lot about his childhood experience too. And you could hear just in the, the lyrics of the song that he had, it wasn't easy growing up. Not only, not only did he make the, the decision to, to serve his country, just even before that was, was not a smooth sailing life, if you will. And just thinking about all the people out there that, that have had divorce in their life and other things that they could relate to, they can grab onto, but it was an inspirational story. It was a culmination of my life, really. I had a lot of trauma that I went through as a child. I had a lot of traumas that I went through when I was in the military. And I had a lot of trauma that I went through after I got out of the military. So there was a lot to talk about there and a lot to break down. And So I just wanted that song to be heard by so many people, not just veterans, because I felt like everyone could heal from it. I don't want to get into like the mix of it, but now he's a single father living here with five children on his own. And this just happened less than a month ago. So right now it's, it's a little bit tight in the house. What's happening in my life is happening in a lot of people's lives right now. And you know, it's just one of those things that we have to learn how to struggle well and just get through it. Uh, about 3.30ish, 3.15 to 3.35, we go meet the bus back up there again so we can pick up the two little kids and then, you know, it's, it's good. Uh, nice little trek up there to the bus stop every day. It keeps me, keeps me going, so. I need you to go over there and stand behind the camera. Can you do that for me? Singer-songwriter Craig Campbell, along with Seth and his five children, were on hand for a performance of Seth's song, Rise Above. That's last Sunday. Afterwards, the Titans and Nissan surprised him with a new car. How about that? 
what an afternoon and what a special moment at Nissan Stadium it was and what a fantastic surprise from our friends at Nissan. And obviously, uh, wow. Yeah, buddy, we are lucky to be just a small part of uh, such an amazing show with uh, amazing people. And I want to thank everybody that was able to honor those two, um, those vets and that songwriter. That's just, uh, that's just phenomenal. And, and to have that moment in the stadium, the reaction of the crowd, uh, so genuine. Uh, we had a chance to, to watch it from the radio booth, and we were, I think everybody was in shock and so pleased to have it happen right there. And I'm glad that you guys were able to put back the pieces for me because they were exiting the field as I was coming on, and I'm like, what, you know, I, I, I didn't know if that was a surfboard, but apparently now that was the, the free car, and, and, and now it all makes sense. And so, what an amazing piece. Um, you know, that's just, uh, it's fun to be part of such a cool thing, so. Seth, thank you, buddy. I appreciate it, man. We are here for you. Thank you, Seth. And thank you to our team for putting that together and the folks at Nissan for making that special moment happen at Nissan Stadium. When we come back, it's time for Kids Ask Coach Vrabel. It's next on the Mike Vrabel Show. From the Bet MGM studio, we continue with the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Seat Geek, And it's now time for Kids Ask, Mike Vrabel. Give me my theme music. Hi, Coach Vrabel. My name is Alka, and I'm eight. My question is, what was the Oklahoma drill, and why do they not have it anymore? What a good question. What's the, what Oklahoma, was the Oklahoma drill? drill? Yeah, the Oklahoma drill. Just to weed out uh, some of the, uh, the, the players that maybe weren't uh, back in the day that weren't quite ready for football, but I remember the Oklahoma drill being, you know, two players, right, would lay on their back, right? One would have a football, one won it, and they'd say, said, hut, you'd get up and you'd run at each other and, and smash each other. The, another version was O-lineman, D-lineman, running back, linebacker, straight ahead, no fair dodging. Um, In between two cones. Yeah. And yeah. the quarterbacks got to stand there and hand off like they were part Absolutely. of it. But anyways, I think that's a great question. And again, the game has changed. The game has evolved. Um, some of those situations rarely happen in, in our game. There's, there's so many more angles. There's so many different types of schemes. Our players are rarely lined up right over top of somebody else. Um, and there's combination blocks. There's zone blocking. Um, and, and so they, there was really no real reason. There's other ways to teach technique, fundamentals, pad level, um, you know, physical toughness, technique, and all those things uh, w without just setting up a, a, a straight ahead drill. And so that's why they did, did away with it, and you know, rightfully so. I wish they'd done away with it about 40 years ago. Did you, catch, you ever catch on the wrong end of Oklahoma Ooh, drill? A lot of times. I didn't. Lot, I'm sure you didn't. That's why you have the Mike Vrabel Show. You're the host, it's your show. I got a funny story back in college, but we don't have time for okay. that. Okay. Uh, how about the Nissan Keys to Victory? We'll do those in the next segment on his show, because he was good at the Oklahoma drill. The Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Seat Geek. Stay tuned. <laughs> Nissan Keys to Success, what we have on tap for you on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Seat Geek. The opponent, Indianapolis, they are 6-5. and five. The Titans played them back on October the 8th. Key number one is play sound and aggressive defensively. Yeah, and it's going to be a physical game. They, they want to run the football. They have run the football. Um, very good offensive line. You know, they stay together in combination. They handle movement. You know, they really give these back some time. And it, when we say sound... We can't start jumping around and peeking around blocks and coming under blocks and because the backs are patient and they will take it out the back door. And that's what got us the last time. And we, we did pretty well. There was some two and three yard gains in there. And then we had, a, had one that, that got out and, uh, and they had a couple there in the red zone. But, you know, it, it's about being sound. It's about being aggressive. It's about tackling. You know, we tackled well on Sunday. Uh, this will be critical that we do that and then to be able to handle the, the RPOs that come off the run game. And then you got to be physical with your run game as we, well. We have to. And again, this is a penetrating front. If we let these guys penetrate, get into the backfield uh, and disrupt the run game before it gets started, 
you know, we're going to be in these long third down situations again. And, um, but, but I think that we can cover them up. I think that we can get into the line of scrimmage. I think we can kind of continue to build on some things that we've done uh, and continue to progress. Uh, we threw the ball fairly well. We had some success play action. I'm sure they'll be tuned up for that and we'll have to be ready for pressure uh, on early downs. But um, certainly going to need to be physical in, in a run game. Won't have time to talk about it, but the final key is create field position and momentum for special teams, which the Titans did on Sunday. They need to carry that over once again this week to being uh, successful against the Indianapolis Colts. For Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thank you so much for joining us. Remind you, 12:02 kickoff at Nissan Stadium on Sunday. Titans and Colts. We'll see you then. Good night, everybody.